Change does not happen by persuading or forcing harder. Change happens when you successfully remove someone's obstacles to change. In this essay, I will discuss the book The Catalyst by Jonah Berger, which explores how to change someone's mindset. Everyone has something they want to change. Leaders want to transform organizations. Non-profit organizations want to change the world for the better. Marketers want to shift consumer perceptions, and so on. However, change is not easy. Often, we try to persuade or even force someone to change, but it remains challenging. Is there a better way? The author takes a different approach by focusing on removing barriers to change. Instead of asking, how can I change someone's mindset? The question becomes, why haven't they changed yet? What is preventing them from changing? We need to think about how we can become catalysts, something that can accelerate someone's transformation. I have summarized three key takeaways from this book. Firstly, the way to change someone. Each person may have something they want to change. Salespeople want to alter consumer thinking to encourage purchases. Employees want to influence their superiors to receive high performance ratings, and leaders want to influence their teams to work more effectively and efficiently. However, change is not easy. When we try to change something, we tend to push. The assumption is that the harder we push someone, the more they will move in the direction we desire. If only we provide them with additional information, more facts, more reasons, more arguments, then they will change according to our wishes. The reality is that humans are not like marbles. Don't expect them to immediately move in the direction we hope for when we push them. We forget about the person whose mindset needs to be changed. What is actually hindering them? What makes them reluctant to change? There is an interesting story about two chefs in a restaurant who were arguing over the last remaining orange in the kitchen. It was late at night and both of them needed the orange for the dishes they had to prepare. So they argued, each feeling that they needed the orange more than the other. Eventually, as time grew shorter, they took a knife and divided the orange into two halves, so each of them only got half of what they actually needed. However, there was a better option. If only they had asked each other what they actually needed from the orange. The first chef only needed the juice for a sauce, while the second chef only needed the peel for a cake. This is often what we forget. We are busy trying to convince someone without considering their motivations. What is preventing them from wanting to change? What has made them the way they are until now? Secondly, what is a catalyst in chemical processes? Experts use a catalyst, a special substance that can accelerate a chemical reaction. They achieve this without increasing the temperature or applying pressure, but by providing an alternative route. This can be seen as a different perspective on changing someone. We change them not by pushing them in the direction we want, but by trying to eliminate the obstacles that hinder them from moving towards the desired direction. When we push someone, they might become irritated. When we tell someone what they should do, they might not want to listen. We can learn from a professional negotiator like Sandra. They strive to listen to the perpetrator and build trust. They encourage the perpetrator to talk about their fears, motivations, and even the people waiting for them at home or their beloved pets. Professional negotiators do not push harder. Instead, they seek to understand the barriers and eliminate them. There is an interesting quote. Sometimes, change does not require a stronger push, but simply releasing the parking brake lever. Thirdly, do not push someone to change. There are five principles explaining barriers, abbreviated as radius. Reactance, endowment, distance, uncertainty, and corroborating evidence. Let's discuss them one by one. Firstly, reactance. Restrictions or limitations create a psychological phenomenon known as reactance. It is an unpleasant state when someone feels their freedom is lost or threatened. When we push, command, or even urge someone to do something, it often becomes counterproductive. A person needs to see that the choices they make are based on their own desires, not because of others. 
Secondly, endowment. If the potential gain does not significantly outweigh the potential loss, it becomes difficult for someone to change. The benefit should be at least twice as good or larger to encourage change. That is why many people only go to the doctor when their condition has become severe. When things are going relatively well, it is difficult for someone to change. There is an interesting perspective. If we desire change, it is not about making someone comfortable with something new but helping them turn the page. Thirdly, distance. It is important to understand that each person may have two zones within them. The region of rejection and the zone of acceptance. The region of rejection is related to things that do not align with someone, whether it be their worldview, preferences, and so on. On the other hand, the zone of acceptance is related to things that they are likely to agree with or something that can still be considered. If what we are trying to influence falls into the region of rejection for someone, then forget it. They are likely to turn away immediately. However, if what we convey still falls within their zone of acceptance, then we can continue the fight. Remember, just like any significant change, it does not happen suddenly. A person needs to shorten the distance, taking small steps rather than one giant leap. Fourthly, uncertainty. Change is often associated with something uncertain. Is the new product, service, or idea better than the previous one? It is challenging to know. This uncertainty often leads someone to press the delay button. Therefore, we must remove the barriers. For example, if you are selling a product, offer a free trial before they make a purchase. This approach reduces uncertainty and minimizes the risks perceived by potential consumers. Lastly, corroborating evidence. Sometimes, mere words are not enough to convince someone. People need evidence to change. For example, if one person laughs and says that you have a tail, you may think they are crazy. However, if three people say the same thing, you are more likely to turn around and check if it's true. In conclusion, change does not necessarily require stronger persuasion or force. True change happens when we successfully eliminate the barriers that prevent someone from changing. By understanding the motivations, removing obstacles, and providing an alternative route, we can become catalysts for change. Pushing someone harder may not be the solution. Instead, we should focus on creating an environment where individuals can willingly embrace change. By acknowledging the principles of reactance, endowment, distance, uncertainty, and corroborating evidence, we can navigate the challenges of change and facilitate meaningful transformations.